A special thank you to today's sponsor, Private Internet Access VPN. An engineering professor once related to me that you need three things to create anything, time, people, and money, and that you'll never have all three. What makes a great engineer, a great designer, a great composer, a great engineering company, or really anything else, is how you deal with the constraints you're given. And in many ways, the more constraints you have, the more creative and amazing your solutions. From their inceptions, SpaceX and Tesla have been poor companies where money had to be won competitively from clients and every penny had to be used to its maximum value. Blue Origin, on the other hand, and legacy automakers as well, have not had this constraint, or at least have not had it for decades. And according to an Ars Technica article that reveals notes from a 2018 study about SpaceX that Blue Origin commissioned, the bloated origins of Blue and the comparative poverty of both SpaceX and Tesla, along of course with their founders' radically different management styles, has made all the difference and has led to SpaceX and Tesla dominating their fields, while Blue Origin struggles to launch pop guns to the edge of the atmosphere. Fear. Hey y'all, it's Dr. Know-It-All. So I know the engineer that related that time, people, and money thing was not the person who invented it. It's around for a while, but I thought it was a really valuable thing. I also similarly had a music professor that told me, you know, kind of the same thing in a different context. And so I thought it was interesting to relate that as well. He talked about how he thought that Mozart was the greatest composer ever, not just because of Mozart's genius, but also because he was born at a time when the, the strictures, the containment, the box that music had to fit in was much smaller than for later composers like Beethoven and Schubert and you know Wagner and Mahler, et cetera, et cetera. So that he was saying that because this box was so small and, and that you know the chord progressions and the way notes could be and all of that were so constrained that Mozart actually had to work you know, in a way harder, I know he was a genius and he did it easily, but essentially what it did was it constrained his creativity and allowed it to come out in beautiful and amazing ways. So I don't know if I agree with him that Mozart's the greatest composer ever, but he is certainly one of the greatest composers in Western music. But anyway, it's very interesting to think about that, to think about constrainment. And when I teach design, I'm actually teaching a design class right now. So if any of my students are watching, you know from the first day of class, I always said that you are constrained, especially with sound design, because you never have the kind of money and technology available that a lot of other design areas have. And even if you do, you should artificially constrain yourself to have some sort of limitations because that kind of limitation is exactly what drives the creative process. So that's creativity in a non-engineering way, but it also counts very, very much for individual engineers and for engineering companies like SpaceX and Blue Origin and Tesla, etc. So anyway, in this video, I want to examine SpaceX and Tesla's successes using Blue Origin as a kind of benchmark of sorts, and of course using legacy automakers in the car market as a similar sort of benchmark. And I'm also going to utilize this Ars Technica article that was published October 4th that has really fascinating information from this 2018 study that Blue Origin commissioned about SpaceX to touch on it. I'm just going to touch on it for the most part. I will put up some screen grabs of some parts of it, but I will leave a link in the description and you should definitely check it out. It's, a, it's very much worth the read and it goes into more detail. I'm sort of using it as a touchstone to talk about my own ideas. But anyway, you should definitely read that article as well to get the most out of this as possible. So one thing that's really important to remember is that both SpaceX and Tesla, and Tesla in fact right around the time that this Blue Origin study was commissioned in 2018, both of them nearly went bankrupt. That's how lean these companies have been. So anyway, as I said, Ars recently obtained screenshots of these notes. So here quoting from the article, Ars recently obtained screenshots of these notes. They offer a frank, revealing portrait of Blue Origin's struggles to compete with SpaceX at the time, and the efforts executives considered undertaking to catch up. In hindsight, they also underscore Blue Origin's failure to address some of these deficiencies. Nearly three years later, SpaceX is a bigger market leader than it was in 2018, with Blue Origin lagging further behind, its road to space yet unpaved. And of course, we can also discuss how legacy automakers are in the same sort of boat as Blue Origin. They're basically too bloated, too corporate, too slow. So following along the lines of these studies, the first point that was revealed in the study was SpaceX's, and again, Tesla's customer focus. And one fascinating but 
really unsurprising element of this was that Blue Origin at the time, and I still consider this to probably be true, is they considered their clients to be a nuisance rather than the thing, the people that they were selling to or the entities that they were selling to. So if you consider your clients, the people you're supposed to make money from a nuisance, you're probably not going to do fantastically. But certainly both SpaceX and Tesla under Elon Musk are incredibly customer focused, right? You know, Teslas are not just fun to drive and everything, but Elon Musk says over and over again how safety is the most important important part of Tesla, right? That the cars have to be safe. And of course, the solar power and the storage are very much customer focused as well. They want to produce quality products, the best quality products at the least expensive prices for their clients, whether that be spaceships, right? So they're reusing spaceships, which everybody thought was a crazy idea. And now they're leading the market because they can get mass to orbit for cheaper than everybody else because they're reusing these craft. So, you know, they, they kind of change the game based on the fact that they're trying to do the most for their customer with the least amount of money put out. So price is a major factor. Blue Origin has not had any concerns about that. And that's been a major, you know, deficit for them. They they, they just don't care about price. They're not good at estimating prices. They don't really understand how to build something for as little as possible. And that's a major deficit for them. Again, also major deficit for legacy automakers because they're dealing with dealerships as an intermediary, they're selling to the dealership rather than directly to the customer. And that is a huge disadvantage for them. It's, it's an albatross, right? Because they're dealing with this whole network of, of dealerships that they don't really control, but also it just kind of separates them from the client, which means that what they're doing is they're selling the car to the dealership and the dealership is their client, not the end consumer. And that makes a really big difference. So anyway, price and customer focus is a huge part of SpaceX's and Tesla's success. The next thing that is revealed in this study, and again, I just am like, wow, <laughs> how did this come as a shock to these people? But cost constraint is actually a good thing. It's not evil. In other words, having too little is better than having too too much. If you have too much, I don't know, think about like after you've eaten a really big meal and you're feeling really lazy and you just want to take a nap and you're, you know, on your sofa or something like that, right? You're not at your best. You, it, you're usually at your best when you're kind of lean and hungry and kind of wanting something and you're like working hard because the old survival instincts sort of kick in, right? If you're hungry, you're going like, I need food. So I need to go out and hunt or find food or something, right? That's the, the lizard brain inside of you thinking that way. But basically that kind of thing for human beings is better better than being satiated and having all the food you want in your belly. You're just going to be tired and you know, <laughs> you're not going to be at your best at that point. And same with a company. If the company is bloated with people or bloated with money, it's not going to operate at its best. So cost constraint is a good thing. It actually drives things forward, right? Again, time, people, and money. And so here you're dealing without the money. And so you have to make the time and your people work as well as possible to compensate for that. And one really revealing aspect of this is the executives talking about this cost constraint stuff and how bad Blue Origin is at cost estimation and how good, relatively speaking, SpaceX is. So that's a really interesting comparison point. You get really good at cost estimation if your life depends on it, basically, right? If the company's life depends on scraping every penny out of the barrel, then you get really, really good at cost estimation. Whereas again, if you're bloated and you don't care about every penny, you kind of just go like, ah, oh, it's going to cost some amount of money. And you don't really care if you're accurate or not. So that's a really, really important part is that Blue Origin pretty much sucks at cost estimation, whereas SpaceX is really good at it. The next revelation from the study was how important vertical integration is to SpaceX and obviously to Tesla as well. That's really, really important. So basically, the more you build in-house, the more control you have over your own destiny. There's much more risk involved, both financial and execution risk at the start, but the reward is also much, much higher if you succeed in it. In a moment, let's discuss how important finding and motivating talented people is, but first, Hey y'all, I'd like to take a minute to talk to you about Private Internet Access VPN, which is the sponsor for today's video. A VPN is all about privacy, security, and freedom, and Private Internet Access VPN is the best at all of these. If you don't want government entities or commercial entities snooping around your stuff, then you definitely want VPN, and PIA VPN is the best at this. They use open source software, so that means that everything's being examined by the open source community constantly, and so their security is at the very top of the game. You also want security for your data and 
for your browsing history. And Private Internet Access VPN never uses logs. They don't keep any logs of your access or anything that you've done. And this has been held up in court, so that's amazing. And finally, we all want freedom. We want to be able to access data when we want it and where we want it. And Private Internet Access VPN gives you access to VPN servers all around the globe. So you can basically be in Canada or Europe or South Korea or anywhere else you'd like to be, all while using Private Internet Access VPN. And this gives you the ability to download content that you might not be able to get in your own home territory, and that's amazing. So with the best privacy through open source software, the best security, and the best freedom to access content anywhere you want, anytime you want, Private Internet Access VPN is the best. Check out the link in the description and see how you can save up to 83%. Heck, it ends up being less than a cup of coffee per month to protect your privacy, your security, and your freedom. What could be better? So the next revelation in this study was that finding talent and getting the most out of them was really, really important. So basically what you have to do is hire the best people and then you have to push them and motivate them. But one thing the study talked about was that the best can be very young and they don't have to have a reputation yet. And you can hire more people than you're going to keep on. That's okay, you can churn through them, right? And then you let them go as they don't fit the company culture. Now, from an individual's point of view, that's not the greatest thing in the world, but from a company point of view, that's really, really good. So so basically you're hiring people that you think are going to be extremely talented and you sort of sort through them you know for six months or a year or something and sometimes they're not as talented as you think they are but also sometimes just the culture doesn't fit right and they're like nah I'm not interested in working this hard or working in this sort of environment or something and so they'll move on or you have to fire them so all of these things are difficult decisions but what it means is that you're hiring you're churning through them you're sifting and you're getting the very very best people out of that and of course then you have to motivate these people and one of the ways to motivate people is to have a great vision for SpaceX that's colonizing Mars ultimately or for Tesla it's changing the world away from combustion from cars to power plants all of it getting rid of combustion and using batteries solar power and cleaner energy sources and then of course you have to have a crazy good reputation and make people want to work for you and hey guess what the number one and two engineering companies that people want to work for in the united states are spacex and tesla and it flips back and forth so anyway that's about as good as you can get you're going to get the best people looking to be hired by you if you have that kind of reputation and then of course once you have those people don't let them become lazy and satisfied you've got to keep pushing them and pushing them to get creative and do the most with the least and finally we have iterative design in other words you need to make it, you need to make it fast, you need to fail fast, and you need to get on to the next iteration. And by the way, the Soviet Union and their space program in the 50s and 60s under Korolev did this exact kind of thing to astounding success. And when Korolev died and the whole thing became much more bureaucratic, that's when they sort of fell apart and, you know, fell behind the United States in the space race. And certainly both Tesla and SpaceX, SpaceX too, great fanfare, have a lot of iterative failures as they go, right? They have exploding spaceships and stuff like that. And that's, you know, if you look back right now, we're looking at exploding spaceships with the Starship in Boca Chica, Texas. But, you know, if you go back five or six years, they had exploding Falcon 9s coming down and trying to to land and everybody laughed at them. But that sort of iterative failure and then getting to success is exactly what has led them to be the only company in the world that is able to reuse rocket boosters at this point. And certainly as you iterate, don't forget to go back to first principles. In other words, think about this from the ground up. Elon Musk has famously talked about this with their factories. You can consider their factories as iterative. Each one they build gets better and better. And they're not just trying to use the square footage of the floor space, but Elon always talks about the volumetric space. So in other words, it's not just this way. It's not the ground. It's the ground plus the walls and everything else inside of it. How do you use that as well as possible? How do you get things from one side to the other moving through as efficiently as possible? You have to go back and think about it. I think Elon says talking about it as if it's like an atomic process. Each little bit is like an atom and you're trying to put them together and create essentially kind of a circuit board, a giant physical circuit board out of this. So I expect, you know, the, the Giga Berlin and Giga Texas factories are substantially better than the ones that they built before and whatever the next Giga whatever it is, is going to be even better than these because each time they keep iterating and getting better and learning from what they're doing. And of course you can see SpaceX doing exactly the same thing with, with the Falcons and now with the Starships. The Starships are at the forefront of this and they're iterating very rapidly and working on things. And I can't wait for the first, you know, orbital or almost orbital launch when they're going to launch from Boca Chica and land somewhere off the coast of Hawaii. But that's going to be an amazing flight and we'll see how it goes, right? If they fail, they fail and it's okay and they'll iterate and they'll work 
on the next one. But basically, whether it's SpaceX or Tesla, it's you iterate, you work on things, you fail fast, and then the important thing is you take away, you learn from every mistake that you make and you make the next thing better. So what can we learn from all of this? It's the very lack of time or money or people or even all three that produces the highest levels of creativity in most fields. SpaceX in space and Tesla in EVs, power and storage show what an amazingly motivated leader and an incredible team of talented people can do with relatively little time and very little money. So next time you feel constrained by a lack of one or another resource, just remember that you would much rather be a SpaceX or a Tesla than a Blue Origin. All right, I hope you enjoyed this episode and found it fun and informative and thought-provoking. If you did, definitely like it so other people can find it, and also consider subscribing for more of this. As always, a huge shout out to my patrons on Patreon. Thank you all so much for your support. You really do make this all possible. I love our conversations. I love the support that I get, you know, just the emotional support, the financial support is really lovely too. All of that is great. So thank you so much. And of course, if you're interested in joining, just check out the link in the description. And if you're interested in some awesome merch, check out the link in the description. We've got the Tesla Bot t-shirt, which is super popular these days. Don't mess with Tesla. Lots of other t-shirts, tumblers, mugs, etc. So check out the link in the description and help the channel out. And once again, thank you to Private Internet Access VPN for sponsoring today's video. And as always, feel free to ask me questions in the comments or at my email address, which is drknowitallknows at gmail.com. Till next time, bye-bye.